Vajana Salakaya, Chaksu Nilitam Yenatas Mai Sri Guru Venamaha, Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Snapitam Yenabhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadati Kam, Jai Manchakalpa Tirubhishya, Namal Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine, Yavase Sasunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine, Manchakalpa Tirubhishya, Kripa Sindhu Pevacha Patita Nam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So today is the 14th of September and uh, on the 17th of September begins the uh, Purushottam Mas. And that uh, preempts the calendar. In other words, all holy days are uh, put on hold. And an extra month is placed in there. And during that month, there's no holy days except the two Akadasis. Um Tomorrow, we'll have a regular discussion on a chosen subject. On Wednesday, the 16th, the day before Purushottama starts, I'll give a class on Purushottama um, and also maybe on the 17th also. The 17th to the 24th is uh, Holy Name Week, where as we just finished the week of Shastra, Shastra Shravana, learning more about the glories of the holy Shastras and the importance of taking time to read and understand these Shastras. Um, so we'll begin that for that week on the 17th also, 17th to the 24th. We'll turn the nectar of the holy name and I have some interesting readings on the holy name that I'm sure Everyone hasn't heard before, so it might be interesting. These are things that will really be helpful, both in our chanting and going deeper into the meaning of the holy name. Um, so today we'll uh, continue with the theme of hearing the glories of the Lord. And there's a beautiful verse from the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 25. Satam prasangam mama virya samvido bhavanti ridkarna rasayana kata najosinat asva bhavarga vartmani stradha ratir bhaktir anukramishyati. A verse, in, a verse that's often quoted, translation and the association of pure devotees. Discussions of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and thereafter he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. The last statement, then real devotion and devotional service begin in the association of devotees hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The process of advancing in Krishna consciousness and devotional service is described here. The first point is that one must seek the association of persons who are Krishna conscious and who engage in devotional service. Without such association, one cannot make advancement. Hmm. So it's interesting that uh, Krishna sends his pure devotee to uh, offer his association through the pure devotee. When we association with, with the pure devotee, we can associate with Krishna. The pure devotee 
is fully engaged in devotional service. Savaipum sam puro dharma. Ito bhakti ahog sajay ahoy tuki apriyata. Yatma supersedati. Ahoy tuki apriyata. That person who is pure is uninterrupted and uh, unmotivated, no material motivation in their process of devotional service. Such association is highly desirable and very, very uh, powerful in awakening one's desire to serve and surrender to the Lord. <clears throat> How is that done? By hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in the association of such personalities. Rit karna, rit means heart, karna means ear. These two are connected, there's a link. So as the nectar of the narrations of the pure devotees, from the pure devotees go into the hear, ear of the listener, they go down into the heart, and in the heart is where the soul exists. And the soul becomes alert to the glories of the Lord and develops an attachment to hear and chant more and more the glories of the Lord. When this continues, one becomes fixed in the process of devotional service. Then they have actually set, situated themselves firmly on the path of bhakti yoga. So Prabhupada makes that point, this association. Association comes by hearing and developing an attachment for the association of these personalities. Mm -hmm. um, it's a shame in this age, people are not seeking out the association of saintly persons. And saintly persons are not so much interested in giving their association. It's kind of like a, almost like a dichotomy where both sides are not really performing their prescribed duties, but still something is going on in that area. So one should be eager to associate with the pure devotees, seek out that association, hear from them, ask questions, and be ready to offer service. This mood will fix one firmly, solidly, on the path of devotional service. Otherwise, we, without that association, and of course, hearing is also the a principle of association. So now, in today's light, in today's world, we have the media. So we associate through these the electronic formats, which I think is not as effective, but it is very, it is also effective, because the sound vibration is the connection. So attaching ourselves to the sound vibration and trying to understand what is being uh, uh, explained, one can uh, start to feel the need and the happiness that comes from hearing and chanting more and more. Prabhupada goes on to say, simply by theoretical knowledge or study, one cannot make any appreciable advancement. So theory is a, is a stepping stone, but it's not the prin principle to giving us that, uh, what they call the dritta vrata, the firm determination. So that theoretical knowledge is the beginning, but one has to take theory into application, and application means to associate with the pure devotees and hear the process. Now, the next line also gives you a little understanding of how to proceed in this way as being described. Prabhupada says, one must give up the association of materialistic persons and seek the association of devotees because without the association of devotees, one cannot understand the activities of the Lord. So when Sanatana Goswami Asked Lord Chaitanya, what is the first business of a devotee? Lord just said, Asatsanga Teagya, 
by a Vaishnava Acharya. Asad Sangha, Asad, that means that Sangha that is not desirable. Tiyanga means to renounce. That's, renounce undesirable association. Asad Sangha Tiyaga, a Vaishnava Achar, and take association with the Vaishnavas. Generally, people are convinced of the impersonal feature of the absolute truth because they do not associate with devotees. They can't understand the absolute truth can be a person and have personal activities. So wherever you find a person, there's activities. Wherever you find activities, there's qualities and what we say, uh, interactions. So Krishna is a person, he has qualities, he has activities, he has forms, he has names, and he interacts with all living entities. Prabhupada goes on to say, this is a very difficult subject matter. And unless one has personal understanding of the absolute truth, there is no meaning to devotion. So although the absolute truth is divided into three categories, that the absolute truth is one, but it appears in three features of itself. It's not divided, but there are three levels of the realization of the absolute truth. The impersonal Bharan, which means the all-pervading energy of the Lord that makes up the creation. Uh, it can be compared to the sunshine. The sun, the sun is localized in one place and the energy is spread throughout the universe by the sun's rays. So similarly, Krishna is in one place, we can say, and then his energy is everywhere. That spiritual energy is called Brahman or spirit. And higher than that is the realization that God is in the heart of all living entities. Vidya, Vidya Vinaya, Sampane, Brahmi Gavi Hastani, Suni Chaiva, Swapake Cha, Pandita, Samadarshanaha. One who has, one who sees with proper vision, he sees that in the heart of all living entities, God is there. He is known as Antriyami, the indwelling super soul manifestation of the Lord that sits in the hearts of all living entities. That's the second level of realization. Again, we can use the example of the sun. The sun rays is Brahman. The sun is the localized, or we might say the Paramatma. But then again, there is the sun god who is the person who is the uh, ruler of the sun planet so and then you go to the highest form that actually god has a form and he is a person his name is krishna so when one has personal understanding they have devotion you can't love uh, energy energy is is simply the ex expansion of the qualities of the source you might you might just like you might say well you have your relationship with your husband and your wife and so your husband and wife both have uh, things that they own and so when you see those things they might also remind you of your partner like that but you can't love those things you have to love the, the person so in the same way, we cannot love the energy of the Lord. We have to love is on the personal platform and that is where Krishna is known as Bhagavan or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Prabhupada goes on, service or devotion cannot be offered to anything impersonal. Service must be offered to a person. Everyone can understand that easily. When you do service, you're doing it for a person. Although a person might not be present there personally, still the activity is meant for a particular individual. 
Rabbi goes ahead and says, goes on to say, non-devotees cannot appreciate Krishna consciousness by reading any other Vedic literature and Srimad Bhagavatam, where the activities of the Lord are described. They think that these activities are fictional, manufactured stories because spiritual life is not explained to them in the proper mood. To understand the personal activities of the Lord, one has to seek out the association of devotees, and by such association, one, one contemplates and tries to understand the transcendental activity of the Lord. Then the path of liberation is open, and that person is free. So the non-devotees, although they can read the scripture, they cannot understand the scripture. They may think they can, but because they're not engaged in devotional service, their understanding is like trying to taste honey by licking the outside of a bottle of honey. Before you can actually have taste the honey, you have to open the cap and bring out the honey. So that, that can only be done by one who knows Krishna. So we have to hear from the pure devotees what is the meaning of Shastra. Because Shastra is so uh, sometimes ambiguous, sometimes contradictory, sometimes illogical. We, have the, we can use many terms that, get, that cause confusion to our understanding of scripture. So therefore we have to hear from the pure devotees what is the glories of the Lord as it's coming from the Shastras. One who has firm faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes fixed and his attraction for association with the Lord and the devotees increases. So that firm faith, which is called strata, or that strata that is not broken under any condition, firm faith. Uh, there is faith, but that faith that doesn't change when circumstances change, but it's not affected by changing circumstances. And that comes with the hearing from the pure devotees. Prabhupada goes on to say, is one's attraction for association with the Lord and the devotee increases by simply by having firm faith and hearing about the personality of Godhead. <clears throat> association with devotees means association with the Lord. Very powerful. Sometimes people say, I want to associate with God. Well, you can through the Lord's pure devotees because they are also associating with God. Two plus two is four, one, three plus one is four. So when we associate with the Lord's pure devotees, we get the association of the Lord through that association. The devotee who makes this association develops the consciousness for rendering service to the Lord. Being situated in a transcendental position of devotional service, one becomes perfect. So here this verse really clearly, along with the purport, really gives you a clear understanding. Give up the association of non-devotees, take the association of pure devotees, hear from them, become awakened in the path of bhakti by hearing, and also uh, it says asking questions. And then through these two things, inquiry and submission, along with rendering service, then uh, the path of devotional service becomes something that you move forward through, through quite quick. It's not slow or arduous. So again, we emphasize this principle of hearing from the pure devotees about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, we have many books and we should hear from books, but we also should take the opportunity to whenever it's possible to associate with pure devotees in person. And that way 
um, we, we find it's much more effective in awakening our attraction to Krishna. Mm -hmm. And all our dialogue, in the association of devotees, all your doubts regarding the execution of devotional service are automatically destroyed without even you trying to, trying to destroy that. Simply by that association. Okay, these are some things we can think about in our execution of devotional service. So any questions or comments? Try to think when you were last in association with advanced devotees and you were hearing. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Um, I would have a question uh, connected to uh, uh, association because uh, I was just wondering as you spoke that uh, sometimes the Shastra says uh, uh, the importance of uh, association with devotees and sometimes association with pure, pure devotees. And uh, is there a difference? Because sometimes, uh, as I heard, the devotee actually means pure devotee, or... Uh, yeah, that terminology sometimes is understood in that way. When they say association with devotees, they associate, they mean association with pure devotee. But then mm -hmm. again, we find many other statements that in general, one should seek out the association of devotees in the, in the execution of one's devotional service. Because a lot of times we might be in association with devotees, we don't really know how advanced a devotee is simply by being in that association. So in any level of, or any system of association, we can always take advantage and make progress in Krishna consciousness. But when you actually know what is the symptom of a pure devotee? And you can see that in someone because everything is understood by symptoms. You can tell a tree by its fruit. No. You, can tell, you can tell a person by the way they speak. Um, you can uh, understand the food by tasting it. So look for that association, yeah. Uh, so you mean gener generally with uh, all kinds of devotees? Uh... That's always beneficial. Mm -hmm. Even if it feels like there are most of them, are, you can always learn how to become tolerant. You can always learn how to become humble. You can always learn how to become develop more of a service attitude in the association of devotees, no matter what devotees you're with. Yeah, I, I suppose I, I have experience about that. Uh, I was just wondering that uh, I've heard uh, in one class uh, that uh, uh, the devotee who gave, gave the class uh, said that um, Sometimes uh, we, we are really not able to, uh, to determine uh, someone's level. Um, and the example, as I remember, it was uh, either uh, Durva Samuni or, uh, or uh, uh, I don't remember exactly, but, uh, but uh, the main point was that uh, there are uh, uh, people who uh, from, from um, Pious acts has a kind of an uh, effulgence, and we can uh, mis mis took it, uh, mistake it uh, for for being on a high high level. Uh, some devotee. Uh, 
And uh, I even heard some example that uh, there are some of the demons who are on such a materially high level that uh, we can... You look, you look for, in association, there are certain symptoms. Mm -hmm. One who's humble, one who's tolerant, mm -hmm. one who doesn't waste time in devotional service, one who is uh, uh, attached to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, one is attached to visiting holy places. These are all symptoms of people who are on the platform of bhava. Bhava is the preliminary stage of love of God. Uh, what else? Yeah, these are some of the things to look for. They're attracted and it's very much attached to chanting the holy names of the Lord. Thank you very much. It's uh, really useful. It's very much uh, different what to look for <laughs> than sometimes we, we think. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Haribo. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare uh, Please accept my humble obeisances. All good to see you, Prabhupada. Uh, I'm under the um, uh, Krishna conscious process, purifying the mind, senses, heart. Uh, but is it purifying uh, soul as well? Well, as this, as the mind and senses become purified, the nature of the soul is revealed. The soul is already pure. There's no question about the soul becoming pure. It is pure. Yeah, because the reason I'm confused because uh, soul cannot be caught, cannot be born, etc. So uh, the soul, soul is the soul is pure, but yeah. it's, it's covered. Okay, so it's yeah, just it's covered. covered. You're covered by the mind, the senses, the intelligence. You're covered. So the, these things can be covering, the coverings can be very, very small or very, very thick. So through the process of hearing and chanting, you're wearing down the coverings. And gradually, the soul's purity, purity will come, come to the forefront or come to, the, come to consciousness. So soul is uh, being purified, uh, probably not directly, but indirectly, yeah, by taking the... No, the soul is always pure. Yeah, that's right. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Saru Kabonoi Sravanari Siddhi Chitte Kori Ayudoi. In the hearts of all living entity, pure love of God exists. Even in the demons, pure love of God, their heart has God, has love of God there. It's just a covering. Material mm. energy means covering. The body's covering them. The material, life, the material world is a covering. Get rid of the coverings. Cut through the coverings. The coverings are false. They're illusion. They're not real. But because we identify with them, they appear to be real. Just like when you're in a dream, you see in the dream certain things are happening. And you get while you're in the dream, you're actually experiencing what's happening in the dream. But when you wake up, you realize it's just a dream. So this is the process of Krishna consciousness is to wake up from this, this dream of material illusion. It's all an illusion, this whole world. It's just one big illusion. It's real in the sense that it exists, but it has no, no, no bearing on the soul at all. It doesn't touch the soul. It doesn't have anything to do with the soul. Hmm. It's simply a cloud covering the sun, that's all. Yeah. Remove the cloud, and the sun comes bright. Remove the coverings of material energy through hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, association with devotees, and serving, serving the Lord. And by doing that, you cut through the cloud, your coverings like that. Yeah, so by following the process, we are taking all the coverings off. Slowly, yeah. As long as you continue, as long as you continue following the process. Yeah. But the problem with us is that we follow the process and we also put the coverings back on. Mm. <laughs> we, we, our problem is that we, we take a bath and then we throw dirt over us next, next moment. 
So whatever we get from hearing and chanting, it's there. We get a little relief. We start to feel purified. But then again, we go back to our mundane consciousness and start acting in the same way we were before. We're thinking in the same way or doing the same, same activities. So that's why association with devotees is very important. Yeah, it's like we get hungry every day and eat every day. <laughs> yeah. So it, it needs clear, <laughs> cleaning, cleansing all the time, yeah. Yeah, but make sure we don't uh, get dirty again, that's the idea. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's always plus and minus. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't have to be, that's right. <laughs> Depends on our determination. Yeah. And that's why Srila Prabhupada said um, uh, constant, constant practice. He said what? Constant practice, continuously. Constant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, constant practice and detachment, and detachment. Yeah, no, not like a one day a week or once a month or <laughs> every day. Yeah, Krishna says that also in the Gita. Constant practice and the process of detachment from material activities. If you constantly practice but you're not detaching yourself from the negative, then the effects of the practice have little or no effect. We have to learn to, to know what to avoid. Yeah. There's Maya's everywhere. <laughs> and that's why it's <he's> invisible. <laughs> but you feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't see it, but you feel it. Thank, thank you, you for thank you for clearing the doubt, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prabhupada, all glory to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful lecture, Maharaj, on association. I have a question about the association with family members. Um, so I always feel like uh, when I'm in temple and with devotees, I always feel like I'm in association with devotees. But how do we feel when, when we are with our family, like husband and son? Uh, they are also devotees, but it doesn't feel like Yes, we are getting the association. How do we feel, make sure that we also think them as a devotee and also feel that, that their association is also association with devotees? Well, when we have the understanding of our relationship, we have the bodily relationship, mother to the son, mother the husband, wife the husband, like that. And therefore, we do our duty in these these categories, but we actually know that that husband and that that son is part and parcel of Krishna. That soul has been brought to you in the form of these personalities in order for you to practice spiritual life and to fulfill your also maybe fulfill your material needs also. So it's a soul. Therefore, not only is your relatives and family members uh, related to you on the material level, they also have our, they are related to us intimately and eternally on the spiritual level. So just like, all right, as a mother, you have to take care of your son. So you have to give him not only the opportunity to, to grow, in the world where he fulfills his needs to live but at the same time or maybe even say more important you have to guide that person on the path back to godhead that's why it says in the shastras um, guru na sasya jane na satya pati na sasya uh what is the other one one more namochaye sarvapay petram umityam don't become a mother, don't become a father, don't become a guru, don't become a teacher. If you cannot save 
your disciples, your relatives from the cycle of birth and death. That's in the Bhagavatam, fifth canto, fifth chapter, verse number 18, 5518. If you look it up, you'll find that verse is very, very powerful. It's the most powerful chapter in the Bhagavatam philosophically. It's the teachings of Rishabdev to his uh, 100 sons. And in those teachings, he gets right to the point. So the responsibility of leadership in this world is great. That's why you see, uh, when you see leaders take positions in, in the political sphere, they don't last very long because they don't have the qualities of being a leader and therefore soon they're kicked out. Just like it says, the, the, the president of a country gets one sixth of the karma of the country. So if the people are pious, he gets one sixth of their pious activities. If they're impious, he gets one sixth of that. So in the same way, we are responsible when we are in relationship to our relatives to make sure we are doing our duty materially and spiritually. So spiritually, we have to become a devotee and we have to live according to religious principles and guide others according to religious principles when being in the position of leadership. A mother is a leader, a father is a leader, a teacher is a leader, a guru is a leader, a political person is a leader. No one is exempt from the responsibilities of elevating their followers in spiritual life. We live in a very materialistic society. And people gauge success based on how one is doing in gaining in the material level. But that, that is not really success. So, as a wife, you assist your husband in his practice of Krishna consciousness. As a mother, you guide your child in a way that he can find the path of bhakti, like that. Thank you, Maharaj. That was really, really nice answer. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Very nice. That's from, that's from right from Shastra. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was very useful. Hare Krishna. Viva. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of glories to Srila Prabhupada, of glories to your holiness. Uh, this is Lavanya Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. Um, so when we are performing devotional service like everyday chanting, um, doing aarti, at that time, uh, what should be our mood, Guru Maharaj? Like, um, I was guessing or uh, I was thinking that the material modes of nature, like uh, mode of ignorance, mode of passion and goodness, all influence you at that time also, Guru Maharaj? Like, um, so we'll be in some, sometimes I'll be doing in hurry. Like, I have to finish this in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, like that. So We have to focus the mind on what you're doing and access the mood of, of devotion at the same time. Think of Krishna or focus on the, the deity as you're worshiping the deity, get absorbed in the deity and get absorbed in the mood of worshiping the deity. That's all. And your consciousness shouldn't be diverted to anything else during these times of, of worship, these times of prayer. First you have the object, and then you develop the proper mood. The proper mood is to serve, the proper mood is to glorify, the proper mood is to offer our love. All these can be done in that, in that worship. Otherwise, if we're not focused, we're just half there, then we won't really appreciate or even find inspiration to continue. We need to focus the consciousness. And the more you take the, you know, darshan of the deity, the more you observe the deity, the more you 
become attracted in that uh, in that darshan. Because Krishna is all attractive. All of his forms are all attractive. So focus. The mind wanders, bring it back. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Okay, so we can stop here. Before we stop, we want to ask all the devotees all together to say, happy birthday to Somadatri. Today is her birthday. Somadatri, Mataji, Ki, Jai. Happy birthday, Somadatri, Mataji. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Somadatri, Ki, Jai. I found out. I found out already. Hare Krishna. Happy birthday. My Hare Krishna. Thank you, my dear God, sister, and good brother. And thank you, Guru Maharaj, for all your mercy and help. Hare Krishna. Best wishes. May may you never have any more birthdays after this life. <laughs> what a wonderful blessing. Jai Guru Maharaj ki jai. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. On that note, we'll cut the cake and say goodbye. Hare <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> Jai Silla Prabhupada Ki. Jai. 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 Jai